Aloha. Um, okay, going to talk to you for a second about uh, Don't Lose Your Vision. We've got a lot of things, of course, coming at us all the time and a lot of things to look at that just pop out of nowhere. So um, all of this is distraction to try and get your eyes off of what you're supposed to be looking at instead of what we are, um, you know, faced with all the time. And uh, the other day I was just sitting, sitting, I guess, and I just heard, um, I see men like trees walking. So I thought, okay, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to find out, you know, what was that? And it was about the guy from Bethesda. He uh, didn't have sight. And um, it was in Mark, uh, yeah, Mark 8, uh, 22 through 25. And so uh, he hadn't had any, um, he was begging Jesus, it says, uh, to restore his sight, to restore, to restore his vision. And um, I thought to myself, you know, well, Jesus took him by the hand and let him out of the town. So that's something that we need to pay attention to. Oftentimes when we get in a stuck place or we get someplace where we don't see very clearly, we need to reposition ourselves. We need to get out of where we are in order for us to see, uh, to be, have a kind of um, clean space or space where we can now see what God's wanting to show us without all these other distractions and things where we have just become accustomed to being stuck, right? So he took him by the hand. He led him out of the town. He spit I thought was interesting on his eyes and he saw partial vision. He had partial clarity. Okay. Now remember that when you prophesy, you prophesy in part, you see in part. And so uh, to me that just spoke as uh, just pieces coming together. And then I thought, um, and then uh, he put his hand on his eyes. And um, when he said, I see trees like our men, like trees walking. And I thought, well, if he's been blind, how does he know what trees are? Or how does he know what men look like? Or how does he, how, how is that determined, right? So I asked him and he said, well, there's a chance that he wasn't always blind, that something happened to him that caused his vision to be uh, taken away. And then I thought, well, that's prophetic, you know, because so often uh, we've uh, encountered certain things. Certain things have come and they've, they've blindsided us and they've taken our vision away, you know. And so um, I said, okay, I'll, I'll give it that. And um, so I thought, well, so first off, Jesus has taken us by the hand, so we're not alone. He knows, uh, we know he's there and he's leading us out of the town, <laughs> leading us out of the town. So sometimes it's just time to get out of town. Get out of town so that you can get your vision restored. Uh, this is for some people that are, you need to get a break. You got to get out of town. You've been in the same spot for too long. Your feet are like cemented to the ground. You've been wrestling with the same thing with no result or very little result. And it's time for you to turn this stuff over and get out of town and let Jesus take you there so that he can revive your vision. He can restore your vision. It may be in part in the beginning where you just bit of things and then all of a sudden it will come clear. You'll have clarity. In the chapter just before Mark 8, it talked about Jesus was instructing the disciples. He said, you look, beware of two things. Beware of the leaven. The leaven. Remember, leaven leavens the whole lump. It takes care of all of the things. He says, "Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of, uh, or rather, yeah, the Pharisees and of Herod." That speaks of the religious leaders and the political leaders, right? So beware of the leaven of that because it can draw it can drop you it can take your uh, strength it can take your vision it can take you and get your eyes off of what god's intending for you to look at which is him he's got a purpose he's got a plan he's got things that he's going to do regardless of what it looks like you know there's been more than one times when earthquakes have opened prison doors all right so let's just give him some you know let's just look at the sovereignty of god here he, god's going to because people are praying there's not a lack of it right now it seems like more people are praying than ever before and um so there's a, a purpose and a plan in place for god to do what he's going to do 
okay? And for us to do what we're called to do. Listen, when you have an assignment and when you have a purpose and God has got his hand on you and you have favor for what you've been called to do, you're going to accomplish it. God's going to do it through you. You may have every kind of thing come at you. You might have all kinds of distraction, all kinds of, uh, you know, hurdles, and you'll, you know, you'll lose your strength. You feel like I don't have any more strength. I, I don't know what if I'm, you know, if I'm even going to do this. But in those times right there, and you're begging God, restore my vision. You know, I got a vision years ago when I first met him and I knew what I was called to do. And there have been, there's been one thing after another, after another, after another, on top of, you know, conflict, on top, on top of COVID, on top of all kinds of things that have come our direction. But when you get before him and you beg him and you're like, don't let me lose my vision. Don't let me lose what you've given me to do. Then He's going to lead you by the hand, take you out of the place that you're stuck and restore your vision. And you're going to be able to see what it is he needs to do. What is the timing of it? That's another thing. We get really impatient. We don't like waiting and we don't like hurdles and we don't like obstacles and we don't like warfare and we don't like things coming against us and we don't like lack of money and we don't like all these things. We don't like it. Well, I don't like it either, but I'm telling you that God is literally pouring out on us right now what we need in order for us to accomplish what he's got for us to do, okay? So I want to tell you that beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod, okay? The religious leaders that are going to try, they don't see. You know what's interesting to me is that even the demons recognize Jesus, but the religious leaders don't. That's pretty powerful. The demons recognized Jesus because he made an open display of Satan triumphing over him in the cross. But the religious leaders are the ones that are blinded to his presence and to his, his kingship. And so, I, you know, you, you have to make a decision and we're there. We have to make a decision. We're going to beg God again. And I mean, it's not even like we have to beg him. It's just, he just wants us to partner with what his purpose is for us. That's what that is. It's a partnership. We're partnering with what he's made us for. We're partnering with what he's called us to do. And we're like, restore our vision. If, I, if, if you've got a new assignment for me, I don't want to be stuck in the old one, right? If you have something new for me to do, I don't want to be stuck doing something that you haven't. I just don't want to get leavened out. I don't want to be leavened by my thoughts or by a political spirit or by a religious spirit or by whatever kind of thing. You know, I just want to be able to do what you need me to do. So I feel like that's where we're at. I feel like that's what uh, God is talking to me. And he said that very clearly. I see, I see men like trees walking. In other words, it's coming back. It's coming back. You're going to see men like trees walking. Trees are leaders and and you're going to see them walking and you're going to see them coming into their place and you're going to see them rise up from places and ash heaps and places where they've been defeated or they've been they've been thrown out, they've been cast out. We've had that happen to us. You know, our whole denomination shut our church down at a time of great growth and where we were getting all the young people, the creative artists and stuff in. And it's like but but we see men like trees walking. We're, our vision's getting restored for this generation, for the kids underneath us, for the younger kids that are going to take this thing and run with it. I see that. I see men like trees walking men, or trees like men walking. I just see it. I see it coming so clearly into place. And God is going to restore your vision. He, and then he told him this. He said this in Matthew 8. He said, don't go back to the town. Don't go back. Don't go back to that place where you didn't have vision or where you were being pelted constantly with the vision that he's been giving you. Don't go back there. Don't go back into that mind space. Don't go back into that maybe geographical place. Don't go back. Don't go back there. And then he said, go home. And then he also said this, and I love this part because it's in my book, Words That Work. If you haven't gotten Words That Work, you need to get it. And he said, don't tell anybody. 
Don't tell anybody. There is a time God is working right now and he's doing certain things and there's certain things that he'll share with us that he doesn't want us sharing with others because it will compromise or people will get their hands on it or men will get their hands on it and they will, they will take it a different direction than what it's meant to do. So sometimes it's just for you to know that you're going to be a part of it, but he doesn't want you sharing it and spouting it out and going all these places. He'll, he'll tell you when he wants you to say something. That's true. And that's in Ecclesiastes too. There's a time to be quiet. There's a time to say something. So that's what we are. And I just had to tell you that. I wanted to tell you that we're, we're encouraged by what's happening. Um, things coming up. Make sure and go to my website, cindymcgill.org, cindymcgill.org, cindymcgill.org. Um, we need your support right now more than ever. I've got outreaches that are coming up, a big one coming up in Vegas. I have one that is, I have a, a, a I'm going to be part of Her Voice Movement, speaking in Portland, Oregon, training there, teaching people um, how to um, go out into this culture and be effective with tools and things that God has given us. I have got a new book coming out called Field Guide, Methods to End the Madness, Proven Strategies, Proven and Creative Strategies for the Culture that We Live in. It's going to put tools in your hands and give you uh, confidence to be able to move out and to get uh, truth into the hearts of people that are hardened and don't believe, you know, and don't have any faith and they're losing hope, quite frankly. Um, and so I've got a book coming out. It'll be out by July. Um, that's the quickest we can get it out. And it's going to be a soft launch at this point, um, which means I can add to it because it's a self-publish. And I can also get my um, my foreword written. I have someone that I want to write a foreword for this book. Field Guide, um, Methods to End the Madness. Um, I'm going to teach you how to be soldiers, how to be alert, how to be aware, how to have boldness. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent break into its possibilities. And we take the we take things by force. If there's war in the heavens, we have the king of kings and the Lord of lords and the warrior fighting with us. We have an army of heaven behind us. If God is for us, who can be against us, right? So there's nobody that's going to be against us. Tomorrow, I'm going to be on Elijah's streams. So uh, talking about boomerang, I got word boomerang out of nowhere like just out of you know how god he just does that to me boomerang and i just put it out there anybody else hearing this and all of a sudden all these people start oh my gosh you know and so i'm going to be talking about what i think about boomerang tomorrow on elijah streams and then also i'm doing the deb's conference with cindy jacobs uh that will be here in the dallas area on the saturday the 15th is my speaking time so and uh, then I have a uh, outreach that I'm putting together for Vegas I've only got a hundred spots where I want leaders people that are already doing outreaches I want people that are already invested in reaching the field in creative ways I don't I don't want you to come just because it sounds like a cool gig I want you to come because you want to be trained you want to be equipped you want to be there's an impartation that we'll put together um, and I'm, I'm partnering with uh, Denise Goulet and um, and we're going to uh, do this in October and again I only have a hundred spots open she has a hundred spots and I have a hundred spots so we're partnering together with this um, so we and then I also um, I'm gonna try and get enough people to do Awaken the Dead. Awaken the Dead is something we do on Halloween every year, and we just walk up to people and ask them if they're dead. I mean, it's Halloween, right? You know, and so if they are, we go, Well, we have this Lazarus thing on us, you know, we're gonna bring you back to life, and it's just fun. Everyone, it reminds me of Burning Man, everybody's all dressed up, you know, so and um, so what I'm I'm hoping to do is I, I want you to go and sign up for my shout on cindymcgill.org. Make sure that you sign up. I have a number of you who have put in volunteer requests, and I'm sorry we have not gotten back with you. We will. Um, my uh, assistant um, and good friend, Abby, she is moving to uh, from Texas to Florida, so uh, we have that little glitch, And but we're going to be getting a hold of you. She'll still be helping me just from a distance, and... Um, 
And so we're, we're gathering people together who can build a solid team of, we can get everything done, we can run it organizationally and, and um, be able to have better um, a grasp of, um, of what's going on. So I just wanted to give you that little bit because I'm telling you, we, I, there's no way I'm going to stop now, man. I've come way too far. I've seen too much. I've watched God do so many incredible things. I'm not stopping. It's just not going to happen. Um, I, I love it. It's to me an adventure to go out and see what he's going to do now. What are you going to do now? You know, what, what's your next deal, God? How you want this to go? So, but he's leading you out of your stuck place. That was the one thing I want you to know. He's leading you out. He's going to restore your vision. He's going to give you clarity where you can see what you need to see in order to do your life, do your ministry, do, do your life. Just do your life. Get you out of the fatigue, out of the oppression, out of the mind fog, out of the stuff that you've been battling with. And he's going to give you a purpose. And he's going to tell you, don't go back there. Don't go back to that place where you all you felt was hopelessness. Don't go back. Keep your eyes on him. You know, we come with a bigger purpose. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about that. You know, we're coming in an opposite spirit. We're coming with the king of kings coming with us. That's how we wage war. That's how we battle. That's how we fight the battles. So, all right, cindymcgill.org. Thank you for signing up for the shout. Thank you for partnering with us. If you have been partnering with us, we don't we don't take that lightly. We pray for you. We are connected with you. And we we really, right now, are in a time where we need more partners to come alongside and help us equip and train and launch people into the field. That's my, that is my, that's my assignment. So, all right. God bless you. CindyMcGill.org. Uh, get words that work. If you haven't gotten that, get what your dreams are telling you. If you haven't gotten that, you can all get these on my website, and in July, I will have a uh, field guide available. So, all right. Love you guys. I hope this helps you. Um, it helped me. <laughs> I was kind of sitting there, kind of feeling down myself when God said, I see, I see men like trees walking, and I went, all right, let's, let's go look at that. So, all right. I will talk with you soon. Bye.